All right. So, now in the next phase of improvement, we want to find out if we can really use the a neural net for solving the same problem. Again, we, we know well that uh, it is possible to do that job, right. So, we have the input layer here and then this is your input in one hot vector form, okay. And then we have the embedding layer and this is your context layer. Remember, we have used the uh, terminologies earlier and then this is your output uh, uh, through the soft max, correct. So, what we do here is we have a fixed sized uh, input window where we can input three words. Let us say that we have a corpus where we are going to be inputting all the words uh, in this order. Okay. So, we are going to first start with three words and then say what should be the next word. So, we are going to train that. So, we do the back propagation training and then we continue to update this until the network stabilizes, right. So, in this fashion you can input all the words in this uh, network, let the network uh, get trained on the prediction and once it is done uh, we can use the model to really predict the next word here, right. So, we not only learn uh, the word embeddings but also have the capability to predict the next word through this. Okay, so, this we have not uh, seen earlier, we only saw how the central word can be predicted okay, in the case of a SIBO model or in the case of the skip gram, how the context words can be uh, found out. So, in this case, if I want to really increase the size of the uh, input, that means from 3 to 4 words. So, I have to start changing this and then my weights here that I have will have to be changed. Correspondingly, we will also change this here. So, it is not easy to really uh, reuse whatever we have done earlier for longer uh, sequence of words. So, we have to really go for another model in this fashion, okay. You understand this? So, a traditional neural network can be used to train, but unfortunately there is a restriction that the input layer, input layer size is fixed and static, okay. And this does not really bother about the sequence of words that is available in the time series. That is another. Okay. So, what are the limitations as I mentioned earlier? Uh, we learnt the embeddings through these model uh, using a local uh, windows, right. It is a very small window that we move it. It is possible that uh, the word good and bad could appear together okay, uh, within a distance of two words or three words and so on. So, what is going to happen when you have that? Suppose, if you have the word window, you have good here and then bad here, good or bad take it and then start evaluating it later. When you train the network, so, we are going to be having this as the context for us, correct. So, that means the embedding is not learned properly. So, there is a possibility, it is not the problem with the network, it is the problem with the way we have constructed the sentence. We probably should construct the sentence very carefully, so that these kinds of uh, opposite words do not occur together. Is it possible? I think in a natural language it is not possible. So, we have to give it to that, that the network would not be able to really do a good job if these words occur uh, very close to each other, right. Uh, this is one of the very important aspects that we wanted to address right from the beginning polysemy. We were able to capture the similarity uh, in some form, right. 
uh, we are not able to address the polysemy again even through the neural network that we have studied earlier. So, uh, to again refresh your memory what a polysemy is, the boys play cricket on the banks of a river, right. So, look at this. The boys play cricket near a national bank. So, same word have a different meaning, right. So, how do we really address this? So, how will I interpret that uh, this is not a place where I can do the financial transaction or this is not a place where there is a river nearby, right. So, we need to be able to distinguish those words when we start processing the sentence, correct. So, how do we tackle this polysemy problem? Uh, is it really possible to solve this? Uh, in the case of the natural language processing, there are few uh, application or the mechanism that has cropped up in this. So, one is to use another language where there is a distinction made, right. So, for example, uh, I can say from the point of view of uh, Tamil, a bank uh, near the river is called as a karai, right. And then the bank where we do the financial transaction is called vangi. So, there is a very clear distinction made uh, in the language, uh, in the Tamil language. So, we can actually use that uh, aspect and then see uh, if we can distinguish that. So, for example, if I translate that into a uh, Tamil language, if this one, this particular one sentence and then translate this into uh, Tamil again. So, you have two different meanings. So, then you can say that the, the from the interpretation uh, you can say that this particular word refers to really the banks of a river and then this relates to the place where you do the financial transaction. So, it is possible and for us to really understand that again uh, a small local window will not be suffice. So, we require a, a longer window where we should be able to understand the entire meaning of the sentence. Okay. Uh, one thing that uh, you must have noticed so far, you know in the case of the neural network where we used Seebaugh model as well as Skip Gram, we completely ignored uh, the frequency of the words in the vocabulary, right. So, that is another aspect that we want to consider. We are able to get the embeddings of the words in a distributed fashion, right. So, are we able to uh, also use the same thing uh, for phrases? The phrases such as you know uh, India today is a magazine, okay, uh, but these two are two different words, but they are joined here, right. So, this phrase we should be able to understand. So, how can we do that? Uh, one way to do it is take all those uh, words where you see India today uh, appearing, make it as one word in the entire corpus and then use it as one word and then train it. So, that is one way of doing it, right. The same fashion here. So, can we learn these phrases? But these are all important things as part of the natural language understanding, right. So, we should be able to really uh, understand what are phrases and how they occur and what kind of words occur together and then uh, completely have a different meaning for those, correct. Uh, like we have done in the case of the word, so can we really crea create an embedding for sentence? Suppose if I give a long sentence, can I create a word vector for that sentence? So, why is that useful? So, we will come to that when we talk about the applications, okay. So, how about a paragraph? Suppose if we want to really identify paragraphs that talk about the same thing in similar context, we should be able to bring them together in one go, right. For example, if I want to find uh, uh, the papers that talk about a back propagation through time at the BPTT, right. 
So, I want to be able to get all those papers aligned along in some fashion, so that I could compare who is really giving me the right description, which one gives me a better meaning. We normally do that, right? So, when you have two different books, we try to see what is uh, described in one book and then try to find out how the other book also described the same thing, right? So, in the same fashion, uh, we should be able to do something with the paragraph as well. Can we really get to that level in the language understanding uh, through the uh, model that we are talking about. All right. So, the limitation that we have uh, gotten into so far uh, with the traditional model is they are truly memoryless. They do not really bother uh, where the context is coming from. All right. So, for example, when you train the network, uh, the weights are adjusted, right. So, for a given context or a given uh, central word, you get the uh, context words, correct. So, when you do the weight updation every time, we lose what was there before. We do not really care about it. We just update so that uh, the network gets into the equilibrium state very quickly. We do not also really bother where these words came from. For example, if I train a word in the Skipgram model, the word could be in the start of the sentence, middle of the sentence or wherever it is and then the context could be appearing in so many different locations of the same corpus. We do not really bother about that, the location and so on. And we saw that uh, uh, we are not able to handle variable length text, right. So, if you want to do that, we need to really change the architecture of the network that we have. Uh, we require really some semantic modeling over the whole sentence. The two words do not really give us, you know bigrams or trigrams do not really give us. It only gives you the context in which the next word or the central word appears. Beyond that, it does not give you any meaning related to that. So, our aim was also only to find the word embedding, not the semantic part. Okay. So, if we have to really get to the semantic level, uh, we really have to look at the whole sentence. So, for example, the, in the case of the machine translation, I need the whole sentence to be able to translate from one language to the other. And then question answering, I need to be able to understand what somebody is asking. You know, if you are asking me a question, I need to understand that question, so that I should be able to understand the background of your question, understand what you are asking and then try to explain the right answer, correct. And then uh, the chat bots. So, you should be able to seamlessly communicate with the chat bot, you know, without uh, uh, knowing that the machine is answering your queries. Text summarization. So, we uh, mentioned earlier, right, so we have a long text and then uh, we want to be able to provide the abstract of the uh, long text in terms of 10 sentences or 5 sentences. You would normally find this as an abstract in many uh, uh, technical papers, right. Uh, even many newspapers give you one paragraph for the summary. Right. So, can we do the text summarization using the same, uh, using the neural networks? Whatever we are talking about uh, could not be achieved using the uh, traditional model of neural networks. Okay. So, those are the limitations of that. And then we consider this data as static, we do not really care about the sequence as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we do not care about whether it uh, is a sequence of words or it is a time series. And then the location of the word is invariant. The location is in uh, not really a problem uh, when you want to train, but uh, in certain cases, locations are important. Uh, we should be able to uh, process this sequence, uh, which are uh, like a time series. So, can we get to this level of uh, solving all these uh, problems 
that we are talking about in the uh, model that we are going to be discussing uh, today.